behind all these closed doors live some of the most famous people from stage and screen from the last 40 years. See you on the other side, you goddamn cracker ass. Jack Nicholson. Fucking Joe it. Pesci. Hey, Billy, come and smell a fucking lot of dandruff. Jimmy L. It, it is a good atmosphere here. Dirk <laughs> Bogart. <laughs> and the Rolling Stones. Here, what you done with all those tins of cling peaches? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's David Bowie. I can't get over this street, you know, it's like living in a lot. Stella Street is the first home I've ever had. Remember, Beverly Hills was hell. Oh, and Mrs. Uggett. Did you know, the funny thing about working in showbiz is, you hardly ever get to work with any of your friends. Now, David might be in France, and I could be in New York. Roger could be in Moscow, and I could be in Bleat and Sash But I'll tell you something, this script in my hand here, it's a right little belter. And there's a couple of parts in here which would be ideal for me and Joe. I'm just off there now to show it to him. He's gonna love it. Why? Why did you move into Stella Street, and why Surbiton? Well, well, you know, I mean, what kind of a prick fuck question is that? Hiya, Mrs. Uggie, hello. I can't get over this street, you know, it's like living in a low. You know, we've got Jim Zoe Hill there, Jackie Nicks, Mexi Kane. It's incredible, isn't it? Dean, just shut your mouth and put that there in the front hall. I told the papers about all these young girls that Jack gets in. She told me she was a girl. You're a liar. Right? No, no, she said she was doing a survey on, on Jack, household paints. That's what she but told me she wanted. Guy. There happened to be money and offer, and I, I accepted some of it. All of it, in fact. If you'll forgive me, Joe, it is rather a strange place for a sort of New York hoodlum like yourself. A what to be living in, isn't it, sir? Yeah, hoodlum? You want to know hoodlum? You try that for hoodlum. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, try that. You can Ow! Yeah, you... Mrs. Huggett, for Christ's sake, will you turn that fucking thing off? What? When I'm on the phone, you turn that off, okay? You're riding the fucking crazy. Oh, Warren. <sighs> Here, it's stock taking tomorrow, and you haven't done those lists that I asked you for, have you, Coop? Jack eh? comes into the shop, he gives us some bread, we give him something, he yeah. gets out of our life. You don't understand the grocery trade at all, do you? What does Roger Moore buy? Uh, Roger comes in for brill cream. We, we stock it special for him. And he likes a pilchard. What you got to do, you got to draw them in with, like, special offers. Say, for example, like, 10% off this bottle of Savlon, right, you know? That will tempt them in, right? Okay. They come in looking for things that they do want, oh, yeah, and they walk yeah, out yeah. with things that they don't want. All right, that right. is retailing. A guy gets out of bed in the morning, you know, he's got gear to score, he's got chicks to screw, and he says, before I do anything else, I must go down to a shop, any fucking shop, and buy something I don't fucking need. Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. Oh, hello, Dirk. Turned out nice again. This shop has been opening later and later every single day. Yeah, well, that's Keith's fault, isn't it, see? Because I have to go off to the old sailors and I'll leave him to open up. Yeah, and I open up in G. <laughs> Turn it off. Oh, turn that fucking thing off. Jesus. Turn it off. Oh. She came with a goddamn house, and what am I to do when in Rome? You see that bloke there? That's Jimmy Hill, that is. Morning, Jim. Turned out nice again. Oh, yes. Morning isn't bad, is it? Of course, there's always a little room for improvement, although, you know, having said that, at the end of the day, uh, if there was uh, a clear azure blue sky without a cloud in it, then obviously you could say there was no room for improvement at all. Do you know, the frontage of his house is two foot eight bigger than anyone else's. Typical, isn't it? Joe's gonna love this script. I can't wait to see his face. Hey, Joe, can I come in? Yeah, now, my wee fucking Yeah, friend. this won't take long, Joe. Now, I think you and me should team up. I have got a great little script here, and I think it's a winner. Mike, if I wanted to work with a piece of wood, I'd axe the fucking tree out there which I want to chop down every <laughs> Three weeks ago, I ordered money in advance, I might add. A copy of The Field, of Country Life, and The Lady. Instead, I get this on my doorstep. Mojo. Oh, I've never done a paper round before. It's the distributors. The what, you filthy beast? It's the distributors. Well, what about my Lemsip? Did you at least remember that? I'll phone him, Dirk. Where's our Lemsip? I said, where's our Lemsip? We want our Lemsip and we want it now. That told him.
And this baby elephant pulls him out. Now, after he's pulled him out, this man realises that the baby elephant can understand certain words that he says. Yeah, you're a fucking now, waste of space. I'm no, what happens then is they meet this tree elephant. surgeon, OK? Fucking cares about a fucking elephant. Listen to me, Joe. They meet this fucking tree dumb surgeon. Dumb who's you need a fucking tree surgeon. Get all that fucking sap out of your head. Get the fuck out of here. One thing about this business is you don't want to put all your bets on one horse. Because nine times out of ten, the second horse comes first. This is where my second horse lives. Al Pacino. You might remember him from The Godfather, Certico, Bobby Deerfield. Oh, around the ragged walk, the ragged rascal Christ his eyes into the death of me. Come in. Yeah. You're not too busy, are you? Busy? Paul, oh, you want to see busy? I got a problem here. How in the name of God you put together an IKEA bed? You know what I mean? Hell. We look at all these instructions. I mean, they're all in Swedish, you know. Pretty, dirty, wordy, buddy. You put the A peg into the B hole. I mean, it's worse than fucking algebra. You know, I think I'll sleep in a hammock, you know? Al, what? What you have bought here is a playpen. Oh. How in the name of God am I going to sleep in a playpen? You well, know? I was told by our cousin in New York that, uh, that Serbican was a really great place, you know, that it was kind of like uh, Sausalito. But I'd never been to Sausalito, so I'm just assuming it's like Sausalito. Have you read Bongo in the Congo yet? Yeah, of course I've read it. It's a terrific film, isn't it, mate? Yeah, and uh, I'm going to do it. You are? We've got some great names around here. We've got Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, Jack Nicholson, myself. I mean, we are all huge, bankable stars. You're out, Mike. Out, Mike. You're out. And this movie's not going to be called Bongo in the Congo. It's going to be called A Tall Guy in the Bronx. <laughs> all the tall actors are going to do it. I got this embarrassing problem. I'm tall. I can't get away from it. I'm a tall guy. Sylvester Stallone, Danny DeVito, me. I am taller than all those bleeding actors put together. Oh, 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 Mike, you're a good neighbor. I'll never forget the time you left me at the hosepipe during the drought. It's not personal, Mike. It's strictly business. I think Al said it. It sucks very big things. He's running out of people. <laughs> Uh, he's running out of uh, thespians, uh, you know, proper actors, so I think eventually I might, I might get a knock on the door and he might say, well, you know, Jimmy, do you want to come and play in Bongo in the Congo? You have destroyed four years of community bliss. You have destroyed my life and I want my bloody oath back. It wasn't right for Mike. And I went right. way over the top. I came out with some really hurtful shit about Mike not being able to cut it. What, Jack? Jack, I got a problem. Has anybody ever told you that you're a very peculiar pair to be running a corner shop? Has anyone ever told you you're a very peculiar pair, period? Listen up. Yeah. You know that you and I yeah. are the greatest actors in the world. Oh, sure, yeah. We go from spooky to lovely and back to spooky. Oh, no, no, no. You speak yeah. for yourself there, Al. Let me tell you, I do spooky. And I have done a little bit of acting, not not obviously since school, but I was in the nativity play once. What do I do to Michael Caine, one of the greatest, most respected film actors in Britain? I told him, I told him he's shit. Now, you're going to tell me how I get back in a good position of parody with Mike. Get on your goddamn knees and apologize, Al. Okay. What, here? No, around the Michael's place. I'm having a bath. Al, there is nothing more to be said. Mike, you're right. Stella Street is the first home I've ever had where I've had something that's bigger than my own ego. Al. You know? What? Uh, uh, come and give us a hand, will you, darling? I've got a blocked drain. What do you think I am, a friggin' fog? You do Bongo in the Congo. I could never do a movie knowing I betrayed a guy who'd lend me a hose pipe. Al, I want you to keep that hose pipe as a friend. Come on. Let's, uh, go and finish that playpen, huh? Yeah. Catch you later. Sure, Al. Ooh -ha! Now that is what I call acting. I say, this this plant's coming on well. <laughs> oh, just smell those leaves. Mm, mm. I shall probably uh, roll those up later on and smoke them and see if it alters my consciousness, because I'm very keen on that sort of thing. <clears throat> Yeah,
coming to stay with you for a whole month. Peace, love. Mama.